Hello everyone and welcome to John's workshop and coincidentally my name is John. People today don't seem to know an awful lot about CB radio that is Citizens Band Radio unless of course they've seen the movie Smokey and the Bandit. But back in the 1970s CB radio was very popular almost as popular as the cell phone is today. Truckers relied on CB radio to communicate with each other to warn each other of road hazards, police action, accidents, weather conditions, etc. All delivery trucks use CB radio and taxi cabs used CB radio. It seemed to be everywhere. And if you just wanted to chat with friends and neighbors on the air, you probably had a CB base station in your home. And getting on the air with CB radio was relatively easy. It was not at all like getting a radio amateur license, what we call a ham license. To get a ham license, you had to pass a written test in radio theory and radio operation, and not everybody was up for that. But to get on the air with CB, you had to be 18 years or older. You filled out a form, you got it notarized, sent it into the FCC, and after a while, the FCC would send you back your license and the call letters for your station. It was just about that simple. CB radio began in 1945 when the FCC designated 23 channels for use by the general population, the Citizens Band. Later on in 1977, the channel count was increased to 40, probably by popular demand. Now your legal output power level was a mere four watts, and that's not very powerful. Your range of communication was probably around five miles. Later on, CB radio began to use something called single sideband, SSB. At that time, the legal power limit was increased, and your range of communication was greatly increased. Unfortunately, CB radio is rarely used nowadays but it is fondly remembered by radio fans everywhere. Well, let's get to the main topic for today's video, and that is my Citizens Band transceiver, model CB1, an amazing Heathcote find. Here it is, everyone. This is the Heathcote CB1 Citizen Band transceiver. This came out in 1960 and sold for $42.95. This was the first in a series of two or three radios, CB radios, sold by Heathcote. They called the lunchbox radios, and it was about the same size and shape as a lunchbox. This example came from the Country Antique Fair Mall in Silmar, California. This unit is in pristine condition, and that's unusual for a radio or a piece of equipment that is 60 years old. There's not a mark or a scratch on it. Front panel is perfect. Knobs are perfect. All hardware is original. It even has the original AC cord in perfect condition. Not a mark or a scratch anywhere. This unit is truly collector's quality. And best of all, it works. It still transmits and receives. Well, let's take a closer look. Here is a nice close-up of the very beautiful pristine front panel and its three operating controls. You might expect the transceiver to have more than three operating controls, but apparently Heathkit wanted to keep it simple, and they did. Over here is on-off volume, and you will notice there is no squelch control. Here is a tuning control that sweeps continuously from 1 to 23 channels, and notice it is not calibrated, so you never know exactly what channel you are listening to. Also keep in mind this has no effect on the transmitting frequency. That was determined by whatever crystal Heathkit decided to send you. This unit is transmitting on channel 20. Over here we have the receive transmit lever. If I push down I'm transmitting. When I release it, it returns to the receive position. And if I want to lock the microphone open for some reason, I flip it up like this. Over here is a connection for the microphone. Here we have two pilot lights, one for power on and a red one to indicate you are transmitting. Up here we have the call letters for the original owner in 1965. 
The first thing you may notice is that this chassis is remarkably clean. No rust, no corrosion, no stains. This is a very good sign. Over here we have our single plug-in crystal, which determines the single transmitting frequency for this unit. This is a 6AU8 oscillator and RF amplifier tube. This tube is a 6AN8 receiver RF amp and detector. This tube is a 12AX7 speech amp and first audio amp. And this tube is a 6AQ5 audio output and modulator. This is the power transformer. And this is the modulation and output transformer. This metal can contains three or four electrolytic capacitors. Here's the bottom of the chassis. This is called point-to-point -point wiring. There were many, many small parts that had to be connected by hand and carefully soldered according to the step-by-step -step instructions in the Heathkit manual. I can tell by looking at the solder joints and the length of the connecting leads that this builder did a very fine professional job. My hat's off to him. As they say in television advertising, but wait, there's more. And indeed there is more to this story. I've only told you half of it. I actually purchased a pair of matching CB1 transceivers, each having the same call letters and each one operating on channel 20. They were both issued to a man named W.C. Waite, DMD. DMD is a dental degree. He must have been a dentist. He lived on Horn Lane in Eugene, Oregon. This was a Class D license, 27.205 megacycles. And it was issued in 126, 1965. I got this information from a little card that goes into a slot on the side of each transceiver. Well, I don't know if Mr. Wade is still with us. He may not be, but a piece of his handiwork does live on, and it's right here on my workbench in sunny Southern California. The little Heathkit CB1 was really a very simple, basic transceiver. It didn't have any bells and whistles. The receiver section was super regenerative, not super heterodyne. There was no squelch control, and it only transmitted on one frequency. Still, that being said, it did work, it did the job. Building Heath Kits was a lot of fun, educational, and very satisfying when the job was complete, you plugged it in and it worked the first time, which didn't always happen. I know this because as a kid I built over 12 Heath Kits, and one of them I still have with me here today. It's back there on the shelf, maybe you've seen it. It's the Heathkit Signal Tracer IT-12. I find it just as useful today in repairing radios as I did when I was a kid. Well, that's the story on my amazing Heathkit find. I hope you enjoyed seeing it. I certainly enjoyed showing it to you. That's all I have for now, but I'll see you again next time. Thank you for watching.